Hello everyone and welcome to Deploy Website Lessons and Code Academy. So in the last lesson we started this course and we looked at uh, Jekyll mainly, that was the main thing, and we learned that Jekyll is just, uh, we're just going to be using Jekyll to set up our starting website because we don't want to focus on creating the website here that much, we just want to focus on deploying it and everything surrounding that. So we installed Jekyll we didn't have to do that locally on our system, we just ran, ran a command in the terminal on Code Academy, and everything was fine. Although if you really do did want to do it on your computer, you would have to do the same, a similar thing, probably even the same. Uh, we also managed to generate this site and open it locally, meaning that only we can view it, nobody else from outside of our computer can view it. So the website that Jekyll generates differs from a website that you'd create on your own. So it offers a standard directory structure as well as components that help speed up development. It's important to understand Jekyll's de default directory structure and contents of your site so that we know how to go from one place to another without getting lost or knowing without knowing what one thing does. Let's actually do clear here. Let's What's happened to the terminal there? That seems broken. Oh well. So, what we have is underscore config dot yml. This is a config... Fu uh, sorry. <laughs> this is a configuration file that contains many values that need to be edited only once. So these values are used across your site. For example, your site's title, your email, and more. Note that this is a YMA fi YML file, which you can learn more about here. I'm just going to hover over the link so you can see it at the bottom left corner hopefully unless the YouTube thing is covering it up hopefully it isn't so underscore includes slash so this is a directory and it contains all the partials or code templates that keep you from repeating your code over and over basically you don't ever want to repeat yourself about anything in programming and this is nothing different because it is programming in a way that, so that your site uses to load common components like the header and the footer. Making your site more efficient and less memory, it requires less memory to load it, meaning it can arrive to the user more quickly. Underscore post slash, so this is a, another directory and it is where blog posts are stored. Again, I'm hovering over it to s if you don't, didn't know what a blog is. I'm guessing you probably do, seeing as you're on the internet, but you never know. New blog posts can be added and will be rendered with the site styling as long as the file name follows Jekyll standard naming convention. So there are probably some names that you wouldn't be able to use uh, with Jekyll that you would normally be able to use if you're just using HTML without the Jekyll. Then you have the underscore layouts directory which contains templates that are used to style certain types of posts within the site. So for example, new blog posts will use the HTML layout defined in post.html. You can learn more about the Jekyll directory structure here. Again, bottom left link if you want to check it out. Or you can just go on this site and check it out from there. So use the file nav navigator to the right to browse Jekyll's default directory structure and contents. No, don't edit any of the content in the files at this moment. If you make edits and accidentally make a mistake, you run the risk of an unsuccessful deploy. And if you did actually change anything, then you can just go uh, get help and you can go on I need help with this exercise. So, uh, there used to be a reset button there, but okay, I guess just make sure not to change anything or change much. So we, if we go on about, we can see what's going on there. Then I think it means in here, uh, yeah. So as you can see, there are all of these files and directories containing different things, different parts of our website that all work together to create what we can see over here. Um, also, I just noticed SAS that it's kind, it's another thing like CSS, but it's a more improved. I think it. There's also a course about it on. Code Cadm, which I actually haven't checked out yet, and I think it's quite a new thing, so I don't know much about it. So, other than that, let's move on. So, actually, yeah, as you can see, there is the structure, 
let's just ignore my portfolio side because I wasn't actually supposed to create that, but never mind. So yeah, this is what it looks like from Jekyll's default structure. So let's go on to the review or what we have learned so far. So what we learned from one to six and now we're going to seven. So we learned how, what we're going to be doing and how we're going to be doing it. So for step one, uh, installing Jekyll and using Jekyll to create our static website. So that's what we did. We installed Jekyll, used Jekyll to generate a static site, started a local server to view our site. So why was this important? The course will focus on the deployment process, but first we need content to deploy. Otherwise, what? why are we doing this in the first place? Later on, if we want to change the content, we will be able to easily do that if we want to. And if we do actually want to pop, uh, deploy the website, we can. Jekyll quickly provided us with that content and now we can focus on the deployment process. Which is, so if, so, if you can do something quickly, you should try to do it quickly, because it's usually much easier, unless you want a lot more detail, then you should probably use HTML. Take a look at the, and CSS of course, <laughs> so take a look at the diagram to the right. In this unit, you successfully accomplished the first step, using Jekyll to create a website, or generate a website. We also provided you with handy Jekyll Jackal commands used to preview your site along with an overview of how your site is structured. Unfortunately, individuals on the internet around the world still do not ha yet have access to your content. So you are the only one who has access to it because it's just local. It's just on your computer, you're the only one who can view it. So we're going to be learning about GitHub Pages servers next. In the next unit, we'll move to the second step, taking the website you generated and publishing it to the rest of the world, or at least to the people who have internet and who know how to use it. Because maybe your great grandma doesn't know how to use it. So on that note, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you disliked it, give me a dislike. Tell me in the comments why you disliked it so that I can improve for next time. But if you did like it, then please give me a like, share and subscribe. It encourages me to make more of this content. Uh, also, if you have any questions, I don't think I said this, um, make sure to ask in the comments down below. I will answer them as soon as possible. Other than that, thank you so much for watching this video. Have a nice day. Goodbye.